you know, I definitely wouldn't mind an easier draw first round, but I actually enjoy playing players like this, you know, like well-known pros. That just gives me experience. Um, I like to play one-on-one. -on -one. Just gives me a sense of um, you know, how I'm doing against other players. And uh, each player is unique in a way that you can't necessarily just use an automatic strategy to play against your players. So you kind of have to fine fine tune what to do against each player. And I think it's a nice play. Here I'm gonna call in a turn. Uh, I've got a pair of tens. Raincon, you know. I'm not sure how experienced he is, but um, in these kind of situations, but when he puts a turn, it feels very polarized. It really looks like a situation where he's either got um, a really good spade or he's got, you know, an air ball. Um, he actually did value with the middle flush, so in the future I wouldn't be able to get away with calling with such a weak hand on the turn. So definitely knows that I definitely know that he's um, thinking about his game. Not kind of just doing the very exploitable, like, uh, bed slicing stuff. He's balancing his game. So I've got ace high right here. Um, I check it down. I'm going to value with this river. Uh, I, you know, I'm very likely to have the best hand. And he might have, like, a queen high or something like that, where he's like, uh, well, if I had an ace, I wouldn't value with the river. So maybe he would assume that I would never value with an ace. And that, you know, if he had queen high, it would be good because I would never bet an ace. So it would be like a uh, pretty much nuts or air situation, except I would never beat him with ace high. So that gives him more hands he beats. But, you know, he folded anyway, so I didn't have much anyways. King A offsuit, it's a good top pair type hand. I'm going to call, see what I flop. Flop much, I'm gonna fold flop. Uh, check. I check back to flop. I'm in continuation of betting a lot. So, I didn't want him to, you know, put me in a situation like earlier when I had the 4 6 offsuit. And I would have to commit more chips, so I decided to just, you know, kind of trick him a little bit, um, check the flop, make it look like I've got something that I wouldn't fold on the turn because, um, you know, that's just a board ace high that just a lot of people continuation bet with them when they have nothing, just because it makes like sense to uh, try and move them off of hands, just represent the ace. Because I know he's a good player, I can uh, probably get away with little tricks like that. Here I have another top pair type hand, and now I actually flop a pretty okay hand. Um, the hand. Now when he checks a flop, at the turn, I kind of put him on ace high a lot. I saw him check back ace high earlier in like uh, another board. So I'm going to try to value at the turn and protect my hand as well. Anyways, he Um, like I said, I'm sorry if I'm a little distracted. I'm just also playing a couple other tables, stuff like that. Um, hope you guys like my blog at the moment. You know, I'm still getting used to the things, uh, getting used to all the different types of uh, ways to log and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, hopefully these videos keep you entertained. It's not, you know, it's it's a mainly for entertainment purposes, give you something to watch, but you know, not necessarily a strategy video, but I put some, some time to put some strategy in it, just just because I could. <laughs> uh, he raises me, King Knight obviously. He has re-raised a few times, but I can't necessarily, I haven't seen anything to suspect that he's actually doing as a bluff at the moment. and. I'm just going to fold, I have king, nine, high, etc. Here, I'm going to check raise here. Uh, I don't think he expects me to have too many aces from the blind too often, so when I check raise here, it really looks pretty weak. And now I turn trips. I definitely have the best hand most of the time. 
Uh, like I said, when I check Razor Bob, it looks very weak, so he can probably put me on like a draw or something, or an air ball. So I think he can float here. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, get more value. Right, so yeah, he saw he checked it back on the turn. And he had, uh, let's see what he had. So he had 6 5. So I think they think I got a lot of value out if I just check called. Um, you know, it might have, like the way I felt with the game flow. That when I check raise the flop, it looked very weak. Also, given the ranges in the situation, because you know I didn't re-raise pre-flop, don't likely have an ace and stuff like that. So I definitely got a lot of value out of that situation. Ace four suited. I'm gonna call out of position again. Flop that shot. Um, same flop as a four six earlier. What I had. Um, flop a uh, cut shot. Best hand a lot. I'm gonna check call. Also, give myself a chance to suck out if I'm behind, but most of the time I'll be ahead. And I'm going to check here again, just very likely that I can just check it down and, and win the pot. Let's see what he had here. So he had a too high, a queen high, I mean. <laughs> so definitely you know, momentum's changing. Um, I've won a lot of the pots recently, you see all the green. So he's definitely feeling the pressure. I guess I can feel that he's on his way to just kind of. I need to step it up, or I'm gonna lose this match. Get grinded down too much. Anyways, I checked a flop. Turns a ten. I call turn bet. Now he bets near pot. Um, looks like he puts me on like a ten, maybe a draw. I mean, what I put him on? I put him on like a good hand, obviously. Um, or a busted draw. When 7 gets there, some of the draws got there, like an 8-9 type hand. When keying out there, I think you can, you know, like the big broadways that are draws, consider re-raising a lot of pre-flop. So it's shifting his, his range towards um, hands that are more value. Um, you know, also he potted it. I don't think he would necessarily need to pot it if he was um, bluffing or, you know, it, it's just a situation where I also have the momentum, I've got the chips. I don't necessarily, if I call here, I definitely give back all the momentum. And I'm very comfortable with the stack sizes right now. I can kind of lean on him until he loses. Uh, you know, I'm still going to raise a lot of buttons. There's no, he hasn't shown me any reason not to. Uh, but he's, he's raising me right here. And like I said, you know, maybe he's starting to feel like he needs to step it up or he's going to lose. So he's definitely um, going to up the aggression a little bit more. But you know, you can't always necessarily assume what you think is true um, without actually seeing some more concrete information. You can only make pretty solid educated guesses, but you, know, you can't always be positive. Here I'm going to check raise again. Um, I dominate so many queens and stuff like that that I can get a lot of value out of here. I checked a turn too, you know, maybe I could uh, represent a draw or something like that. And the turn to queen, he, that's pretty solid. Um, I can definitely charge a draw or something like that. I think if I call a turn, he's not necessarily going to bluff anymore, so I'm going to my hand. 